our blood pumping, our energy going. Um, you know, today I have been keeping up with the news and anytime I can put on some good music and bring that good vibe in, it's always a good time. Thank you so much for joining us. I see several people have recently joined and I just want to do a quick reminder to ask everyone, please mute your phones. If you're not sure if you're muted, um, there's a little icon at the bottom of your Zoom screen um, and it looks like a little microphone. And if it's red, you're muted. If you notice that it's not, you're unmuted. And it really does have an impact as silly as it seems. Um, we pick up all of us on any background noise going on in your house. So um, please make sure to keep an eye on that mute. We also want to know who's joining us tonight. We are a global business and we have friends and consultants joining us from all over the world. So if you haven't already, post in the comments your name, where you're tuning in from. And if you had someone who invited you tonight, you are their special guest, then please let us know who invited you. My name is Maisha Proctor, and I am the Corporate Business Development Director, um, which means I am not a consultant, but I get to spend a lot of time with consultants. It really is a dream job, um, and I absolutely love it. I've been with the company going on five years, so it'll be five years this June. And when I first came to Rodan and Fields, I came to help create and develop our training department because as we say with our consultants, you know, you don't have to be an expert. We'll make sure that we arm you and we train you. And that was one of my roles to create tools and resources to support our consultants. I absolutely love that role. But then I started to think and look at our areas of opportunity and roles in the company that would let me be even closer to the consultants. And so I took a role um, that put me right in the field. I actually moved from San Francisco, where our corporate office is based, to Brooklyn, New York, where I'm at. Shout out to Brooklyn. Shout out to my New Yorkers. Post in the comments if you're there or former New Yorkers, Melissa Darnell. And um, so, and this allows me to spend time. I coach the consultants. I support them. We do great events like this to help them share their stories. So it really lives up to that mantra that when you get started with Rodan and Fields, you may be in business for yourself, but you're never in business by yourself. Now, I've been in the beauty industry going on 15 years, but I didn't start out that way. In fact, I started off um, growing up in the suburbs of Chicago. I studied musical theater. I did competitive swimming, and I went on to college in New Orleans to study English pre-law and operatic vocal performance. Yes, I got asked all the time, what are you going to do with a law degree and an opera degree? Oh, I guess I thought I'd be a singing attorney or an attorney that represented singers. I didn't have it all figured out. But what I did have a focus on was that I was going to have a very serious path, very serious career path. You know, don't we all kind of have ideas of what roles are conventional and traditional and important? And I had that in my mind at the time. But as goes life, as we're experiencing right now, Hurricane Katrina blew into my senior year of college and said, it's time to think about things differently. I wasn't able to apply to law school on time, so I needed to do something in the interim, as my mother said, to make some money and get out of her hair. And a friend had proposed that I come and work for her at Sephora um, Beauty Company. And that was the first time I considered the industry. Um, and it really didn't interest me at first. I was actually a little um, turned off by it, thinking, that's not a serious career path. Why would I do something like that? I should intern at a law firm or do something that'll keep me on my trajectory. But I started to do some research and I learned a lot about the beauty industry. And more importantly, what my friend reassured me was, if you're willing to be trained, if you're willing to work hard and you're willing to be coachable, you will fall in love with this industry because it helps people, it gives back to people, and it truly is a bulletproof industry, meaning through recessions, through hard times, this industry is tried and true. And it did give me a chance to think about things differently. And I got started in the industry. I did exactly what she said. I did training. I learned a lot on my own. I got passionate about it. And I haven't looked back since. I've worked for companies that are large, like Sephora, Estee Lauder, and L'Oreal Corporation. I've helped launch 
two global skincare startup companies. And that's what led me to Rodan and Fields. And I can tell you, based on my experience, Rodan and Fields is unlike any other company and opportunity out there. What I first love about the fact that we're in the student channel is that Rodan and Fields is the great equalizer. What do I mean by that? You get to bring who you are to the table, and that is exactly what you need to find success here. So I want you guys to think for just a moment, what do you feel you're good at? What are some of your strengths? I actually want you to literally post them in the comments because sometimes we don't brag on ourselves enough. Are you creative? Are you analytical? Are you a good cook? Are you a good people person? Are you fun on social media? I want you to put it out there. I'm a great dance teacher. I love that, Ela. See, whatever you are and whoever you are, those skills and talents are what you bring to this business. We don't ask you to be anything other than who you are. And we all start at the same starting line every month with the opportunity to set a goal and do the work towards achieving that goal. So you get to determine how far you go in, that, in this business, which you guys is very different than many of us have the choice in some of our corporate jobs or in other aspects of our life. We don't have a lot of choice. And I will tell you, there is no industry like this industry. In fact, as I told you, not only is it bulletproof, but it is in itself premium skincare, a $164 billion potential industry by 2022. $164 billion. And that will be an increase of $40 billion up from 2017. So the industry has had continued growth year over year. And I've seen that even going back to when I first started. It just seemed like no matter what we were going through as a country or a world, people still wanted to take care of themselves, feel good, and be empowered to do that through beauty care. So for some of our consultants, they love being a consultant at Rodan and Fields for so many different reasons. Some call it their side gig or their side hustle. Some call it their full-time job. They do this um, full-time hours and earn a full-time income. Some call it their part-time income and some call it a legacy business. In these unprecedented times, we are more proud than ever, especially me on the corporate side. And I know so many of the consultants that I talk to that whatever they call this business for themselves, it has been there for them. You see, our consultants never had to close their doors. They continue to have their small businesses be there for them. Customers never stopped receiving service or products. And our consultants were able to maintain financial confidence as they received a paycheck last month, this month. And if they keep working their business, they'll receive an RNF payday next month, which is very reassuring. This company was actually born after a recession, and we know it very well, what it takes, and that life gives us twists and turns. And it's amazing that our consultants have something they can really depend on. So whether you're here tonight to be inspired, which you will be when you hear these stories, um, or you want to learn more, you want to learn maybe how you can earn a paycheck if you're not earning one right now, or earn an additional paycheck every month. Maybe you want to build up your savings. Maybe you're just looking to be part of a team and be on awesome group calls like this to wind down, talk, share, and celebrate. Maybe you want to give back to charitable causes or be part of a company that gives back. We do that through our Prescription for Change Foundation, <laughs> contributing millions of dollars to organizations that empower youth with education and give them more choices for their future. Or you, maybe you're looking for a way to move forward to start getting ahead instead of just getting by. Whatever it is for you, I want you to listen up and listen closely, maybe take a few notes because I know these ladies are gonna drop some powerful nuggets. But I always say this, nothing changes if nothing changes. So tonight might very well be the night that you decide to shoot for the stars and get exactly what you've always been looking for. And this RNF community will be there to coach you, to train you, and celebrate you every step of the way. So to help me bring this to life, I have three wonderful um, leaders at different stages of their business, different backgrounds, different career paths, who are going to share with you um, nuggets of their RNF journey. 
So to kick things off, I'm going to have them start off by introducing themselves. So let's begin with you, my friend, Melissa, and then we'll have um, Lisa and then Jenna to introduce themselves. Well, thank you for that. Cheers to actually putting on clothes and makeup for the first time in over a month. That was quite a feat for me today. So I'm embracing the pool beach waves and I'm just going for it. And thank you all for joining us tonight. I know that times are different and our home lives look different. So what we wanna do tonight is just give you a little taste of what we do on the regular and maybe, just maybe something will match what you're thinking about or what you're thinking of. But as Maisha said, my name is Melissa Darnell and I have been with Rodan and Fields for almost nine years. I'm a New York City born and, born and raised, lived there through my post-college single days, um, started a family there. I have two children. I have an eight-year-old boy, Tyler, and an almost 12-year-old girl, Samantha. Um, we took the plunge and moved to South Florida two and a half years ago and never looked back. So while I did build a career in New York City, my heart was home with my children and I've quickly adapted and changed everything about my life from wanting to be a stay-at-home mom to embracing being a work-at-home mom. And it really is the best of both worlds. Thank you, Melissa, glad you're here. Okay, Lisa, tell us a little bit about you. So hello, ladies, good evening. Um, I'm really excited to join this call as well. I um, wear a lot of hats as I'm sure all of us do. Um, I am a wife, I've been married almost 15 years. I am a mother of uh, four, two that came from my belly. So in, in the house, I have a 12-year-old uh, and a nine-year-old. Well, he's 10 now. And I um, am an entrepreneur as well. I think I've always had sort of an entrepreneurial, uh, I don't know, appetite for just wanting to have my own business since I was a kid. It really started when I was seven years old. I would water the, all the neighbor's grass and make money. <laughs> so I was uh, consistently always had cash of all of the children. Um, and I used to put half of it in my bank and I'd spend the other half. But I've also always been a giver. So I would share you know, the money that I made from watering grass with my sisters and cousins. And I come from a family of um, mostly women. So about 25 women and three men. Um, so I have only a few uncles, but a lot of cousins and aunts. And so I say that because I've always been surrounded by so many strong women, um, both younger and older. And I think what I've learned from that is just that I learned to root for other women. I learned to be very supportive and loving. I'm a you know, I'm the oldest for some of the cousins and for my sister, but I'm also the youngest for a lot of them. So I feel like when you're kind of in the middle, you're very versatile. You can, you know, I can hang with the, with the riches of folks or those without any. Either way, I'm very comfortable with people and I love people naturally. And so for me to get into uh, Rodan and Fields, it was really kind of a no brainer one because I just love the product. And then secondly, um, I thought it was an amazing opportunity to help others. Um, so that's kind of, well, the other part about me, obviously I play professional sports, so I do have, um, a few medals and trophies that I'm proud of also. Um, but I think, uh, one of the things about being a student athlete all of my life um, in school and college and going back to get my master's was I was always a student athlete who didn't want to be known just as the athlete. So I was always the, you know, the class president for many years in high school and running for office and doing things like that in college, as well as the, you know, the Val Victorian for my master's program. So I love to win. Um, so teamwork for me just comes natural, uh, but the desire to win in the competitive nature um, is always there. So I think um, having the spirit and the idea of wanting to be a businesswoman and having a residual income and different uh, income outlets for me just was a natural fit. And then the last thing is, is that I just never get a part of anything that I'm not truly passionate about. And so these products, as we'll get into it, they speak for themselves, something that I really fell in love with. And then I was like, okay, so now once I found out that I love the products and I just wanted to know more, you know, about the business and how I could help. So part of me being here 
you know, the celebrity side of it is what it is, but I'm still like everyone else, you know, a mom or a wife or a woman who knows what it's like to, you know, we're surviving and we have to find different ways to be survivors and get our hustle on. So I'm just here getting my hustle on just like the rest of you. So thanks for having me. Yes. Hashtag get the hustle on Lisa. I yeah. love it. And <laughs> happy birthday to your son. I know you guys did a fun quarantine birthday party. It looked beautiful. Okay, let's head out to the West Coast now um, and have my friend Jenna Kravitz introduce herself. Well, I know you guys are not going to believe this, but I never played professional sports and never earned an Olympic gold medal. But I'm so impressed with Lisa um, and more than anything, um, just with her heart. And um, so I'm excited to be here. Nervous, which is not normal for me. Um, as a public speaker for some, some of my career. Um, so my name is Jenna Kravitz. I'm coming to you tonight from a suburb in Los Angeles, California, where I was born and raised. Um, that made me a diehard Sparks fan also, like many in the chat, I see them blown up. Um, and um, my Rodan and Fields journey started about six and a half years ago. And it started the way that a lot of people start, and that is as a customer, um, right? Raise your hand if you were a customer first. <laughs> um, so I, you know, I saw a friend post on Facebook about this. And um, at the time, I was about 35 years old, thought it was time for some big girl skincare, reached out to her, placed a big order, started using it. And within three weeks, my skin had completely changed from dry and dull to hydrated and glowy. And people started to ask what I was doing. Did I change my makeup? And the answer was no. I was just, I had this magical new skincare and I sent six or seven friends to my friend in Florida who I bought it from. And I said, you know, you can get it from her. She'll give you a discount. <laughs> and she called me up one day when I was sitting at a professional conference and she said, you know, listen, you could sell it to them. I could sell it to them. And I was like, nope, not for me. See, guys, I said no because I am busy. I, at the time, I was even busier, which is hard to imagine. Um, professionally, I'm a clinical neuropsychologist. I specialize in geriatric neuropsychology. My passion is studying memory disorders and preclinical markers of dementia. So really trying to understand who in their 40s is going to progress to develop dementia. And then how can we help these people? Um, I, at the time I was on staff at Cedar sinai Medical Center where I spent six years of my life working as a hospitalist neuropsychologist. Um, I, that was a 410 schedule. Um, I've been a professor at Pepperdine University for the past 14 years. I'm a clinical researcher at UCLA where I supervise a large team of doctoral students still to this day. And for many years I worked as a media expert a few nights a week for a well-known television physician by the name of Dr. Drew on his television show on HLN. Um, where I still remain on staff, as you saw this morning, <laughs> my show is my stage mom, capturing film, um, where I still fill in as a media expert when I need. Now, on top of that, personally, it was the worst time of my entire life as I adjusted to becoming a newly single mom after 16 years to then four-year-old boy-girl twins who turn 11 on Saturday. So we're going to do a quarantine birthday too. Um, and on top of all of that, I was also the president of the PTA at preschool that year. So oh. the idea of starting a business when I didn't even have time to pee alone was like completely ridiculous. But there was something about the opportunity that I couldn't stop thinking about. And I'm just one of those go big or go home people. So I ran the idea by a couple of friends. I ran it by my former husband. Um, I value his opinion in, in, in his pro profession. It was valuable. And um, he sat me down and he said, Jen, I looked into this company. It's going to be a freaking gold mine. You got to do it. And you got to do it now. And I grabbed my laptop. I enrolled on the largest business kit we had because it was go big or go home. Um, and, and that first paycheck that I brought home was a little over $1,100 um, and covered the cost of my business kit. So um, it's now been six and a half years. I have earned every title promotion in the company, just like Melissa Darnell, um, almost everyone maybe. <laughs> and um, this business has completely changed my life. I used to be workaholic. And the truth is that one day I was sitting on the, on the freeway in Los Angeles traffic and it hit me. Um, something really hard hit me. And that was that history was repeating itself, guys. See, I was raised by a single mom also. And my mom worked seven days a week in our family business for her parents um, to provide the lifestyle that she wanted for my brother and I. And 
we were pretty much raised by a nanny. <laughs> um, I love my mom and she did the best she could. I, I know that about motherhood now, um, but, but we were really raised by a nanny. And one day I was sitting on the 101 freeway and I was driving home from work in a 90 minute commute. And it hit me that my kids were in kindergarten and the only person who had the privilege of picking my babies up in that carpool line, it still makes me like emotional, was my nanny. And guys, I knew that the story had to change. It had to, because if it didn't, my children would grow up to be 42 years old like me, and they would tell the same story about how their nanny was the one that was there for everything and that their parents weren't, right? So I kicked my Rodan and Fields business up into high gear, and over the last six years, it has completely changed my life. I have left some of my jobs um, where the juice just wasn't worth the squeeze anymore, <laughs> the commute times weren't worth it, and now I get to work from home. I still get to work as a clinician and a professor and a researcher, but I choose how many hours I want to dedicate to that to now, because the truth is that they need me more than I need them now, <laughs> um, and I get so much fulfillment from this community. So that is just a little bit about me. Thank you, Jenna. Thank you. We loved all your inspiring stories. Can talk for a second, please. Um, just, just really quick. Okay. I want to acknowledge that um, it is unprecedented times in many ways, and we may have a little interference on our call tonight. So I want to apologize in advance for that. We'll do. We will keep going forward. I will do the best to keep my eye out um, for anything going on, and I just want to. Um, apologize for any offense I ended the chat so um, that was not intentional and you know here we go we're gonna keep going okay so you guys we are going to now have some great questions for the ladies um, that are going to um, they're gonna give us some great and inspiring um, responses so question number one is when you considered getting started in this business what was one key factor that led to your yes? And I would love um, to have in the order, we're going to hear from Melissa, then we'll head over to Jenna, and then we'll hear from Lisa. Okay, so this business was introduced to me by a friend of mine who I worked with in my corporate job. And she told me the backstory that many of you have heard about our founders and about our doctors and the path they took with their proactive business, how we used to sell in Nordstrom. She told me all these buzzwords and I got to thinking, and I'm a pretty analytical person. I am numbers girl. I hate niggers. I hate niggers. I hate and I really thought long and hard about this business. And what I decided was that I my regret of not doing this is not going to compare to the experience that I have if I join and I'm not successful. So I just put my head down. I took a leap of faith. Again, I was working full time. I had kids at home with somebody else watching them and I had a goal. And my goal and my vision was to change my life story. And I knew that if I was going to make a difference, and I, I never imagined that the business would turn into what it did. So when I'm talking about change my life and the thoughts that cross my mind, I was talking about being able to shop without having to justify. I was talking about extra date nights. I didn't realize that this business was going to be extremely life-changing. But just to be able to change my future just a little bit, I knew that I had to take a risk because I knew that I would regret it big time if I didn't and people around me did. So I, I did my due diligence. I listened. I thought about it for maybe a night. And then I jumped in, like Jenna said, and I never looked back. And nine years ago, my life was so different. Um, I'm constantly impressed on how the business and the company is evolving with us. So every day, my why, my reason for doing this expands a little bit every single day. And yes, I am a corporate marketing advertising girl by trade, but I am now what I call the serial class mom and a true philanthropist at heart. My husband and I are both entrepreneurs and we just love this life that we built. And I know looking back that if I had said no, my life would be 
completely different. So, you know, sometimes you got to take that risk, you got to take that jump and figure it out after. So I'll jump in from here. Um, and I, so I didn't think that hard about it. And I didn't do all the research like Melissa did. I knew there were a few things that I was considering um, in this. So I mentioned that I ran the idea by my former husband. My former husband is the most sought after bankruptcy trustee in the country. Um, he's a retail bankruptcy trustee. And so when big companies like Circuit City, Radio Shack, Wet Seal go into bankruptcy, he becomes the CEO of those companies and he restructures them or winds them down. He also happens to be one of my best friends. Um, and so I ran the idea by him and he said, Jen, don't get into anything unless I look into this. And that's when he came back the next day, clapped himself on my couch and said, this company is going to be a freaking gold mine. You got to do this. And um, his opinion was really powerful to me. Um, he has, his entire job is about evaluating the financial health of very large companies. And, and my background is in medicine. So <laughs> I didn't have any business background. I didn't have any sales background, but I knew three things to be true. I knew that if these doctors could build one multi-billion dollar brand in an acne market, which is a relatively small market in skincare, that they could absolutely do this again. Okay. Number two, I knew that there was a ceiling as to how much I could earn in my given career. Guys, people don't become professors and teachers because they make a lot of money doing it. <laughs> they do it because they love it. And that is why I continue to teach now. Um, so I knew there was that ceiling. And the truth was that I thought about it and I'd heard about the compensation plan and the generous commissions. And I thought, you know, I made $65.34 an hour as a clinical neuropsychologist at a big hospital. And I had to work an hour for that, right? Minus taxes. I mean, the nanny and I were nearly breaking even. But I put in one order from Rodan and Fields for, I don't know, let's say a lash boost. Takes five minutes. And that was $40 in my pocket. And I thought... The ceiling is much higher in this company. And number three, I knew that if I didn't at least give it a try, that I would probably regret that. And guys, at my age, I don't do regret anymore. I've lived through a lot. I have Crohn's disease. I've had multiple surgeries. I went through a painful divorce. Um, I'm a single mom and proud of it. And I don't do regret. I don't teach my kids to do regret. So I just went with it. Those were the three things I really considered. And, and the reason that I wake up today and do this job really isn't about me. Um, the truth is I never needed this job to put food on the table. I have a, I have a career. I, I had and I still have a career. Um, but for me, it's about the thousands of men and women who have joined my team across the US, Canada, and Australia, who I have a responsibility to, to make sure that they succeed. So my why is all of these people on my team so that they can experience the life changes that they want to experience. Lisa, on to you. On to me. Okay. So for me, I think my why really came down to the fact that one, I really love the product uh, for myself. And here's some things, you know, being, a, you know, as a black woman, we have a few different challenges when it comes to two things. And one of them is uh, skin sunblock, basic sunblock. And so Melissa, who gave me this sunblock, well, not this one, but my original sunblock a year, a year and a half ago, I guess. The fact that when you put sunblock on your skin, a lot of times for us brown girls, it does us a disservice because it's so light. This skin block, I don't know if you can even see how it just rubs in and then it's not super oily, but the fact that I could go out and just have on sunblock here in Florida and it not be all like white and pasty on my skin was amazing. I think the second thing that I really loved, and you know, I'm just telling you guys, this is like me keeping it real, but what really sold me was the Radiant Defense, which if you can see that, I don't know if everybody has products or not, but the fact that when we as uh, brown skin women, black women wear sunblock for us, we would never put sunblock on our face, not just because we have more melanin, but because the sunblock would be so white <laughs> that we look like we threw powder on our face, which is not a good look when you're trying to be cute with your swimsuit out in, in the sun. Or just going for a walk or a run. So when you talked about Jenna just aging over time, I think in our community, in my community, it's sort of the idea that we don't need sunblock because we have darker skin, which is a total lie, as we all know. Um, so it was sort of the idea that once I moved to Florida, 
I'm like, wow, we are so much closer to the sun and the equator that the, in the equator that the heat felt so much different than living in California. So to be able to have this radiant, um, this radiant defense in my skin tone when I would put it on and not need makeup and go play tennis or go for a run, two products that I just fell in love with. So those are the first products that I, I really use consistently. And then I ended up moving into um, basically redefine. I wasn't a person who had a lot of acne, but my skin never glowed the way that it glows now. In fact, more people in the last few years, last year really have given me more compliments about my skin than I ever had my whole life. And not that I didn't have nice skin, but it wasn't as radiant. It wasn't as vibrant. And so I really, my whole why was one, I had to love the product and really believe in the product. So that's my number one. I know that I feel good when I tell anybody about the products because I actually use it every single day. Um, I don't, you know, go to bed without moisturizing and making sure you get your neck, you know. So for me, I think moving into just when you get into your 40s, I think you take skincare totally different and more serious than you do in your 20s. Or, you know, I'm like, okay, my mom told me all the time, go put your moisturizer on. I'm like, mom, calm down. Like, my skin will be fine. You know, you went to bed with makeup on sometimes, you know, where I did, even though my mom had completely taught me to take my makeup off all the time. Um, but when I played basketball, I still wore a really light, something light, a little light foundation, a little light lips, lipstick. But by the time I finished, obviously in shower, I never had any of that on. So even after a game late, I would put some sort of, you know, makeup on, go home and not necessarily wash it out. Well, there goes your 20s, right? So when you kind of fast forward and you get to 40, now it's like, okay, now what was, what were you saying? What, what should I do with my skin? And I think I really started to take it serious once I hit 40. So that sort of was the fact, my number one is the fact that I really love the product, um, highly recommend it to everyone. Uh, the last booster, obviously that came later. And then I realized, wow, this is like everything made by Rodan and Fields, I love. The second thing was just sharing the idea with other people. Every time someone asked me, oh my God, you have such amazing skin. I'm like, guess what I use? You know, it was always an opportunity to explain to someone about Rodan and Fields. So I feel like um, having the opportunity to be truly authentic in who I am. I don't push it on people. I'm not very salesy. I almost had to figure out how to even put it in my social media without it sounding like I'm trying to sell somebody something because that's not really what I wanted to do. But the business side of it is, hey, here's an amazing opportunity to work with other people and work with other women and have more teammates, which I'm all about team and encouraging people and wanting to win. And so I think the business side of it for me was like, if it's authentic to you know, other women. And if you like the products and hey, let's get in this together, let's let's ride. And the last part again, is just residual income. I mean, what's better than that? I have five jobs. <laughs> well, before the quarantine, I had five jobs. <laughs> before the quarantine, I had five jobs. Now, you know, I have jobs that I don't have to go anywhere to do, which is a beautiful thing. By being with Rodan and Fields, you know, I also do cameos, which is great. I still have checks coming in. Um, and, and I'm not able to leave the house. So, I mean, you know, thank God that, that probably was a, a foresight that he knew that was coming that I did. But I think we're in such a time right now that to have, you know, more than one job is a blessing and to be able to be an entrepreneur for yourself and work as hard as you want in your own business. I think it says a lot. And so for all those reasons, those are my why. So it's kind of a lot, but Multiple yes. We have a yes parade. Um, I love hearing from each of you guys. I'm always so inspired and renewed by um, your stories. And I was just thinking just now as I um, was listening, but also wearing multiple hats of like hacker police. And I was like scanning our thing to make sure we have a great experience. But I was still drawn in by your guys' stories. So um, it just shows that we can all connect and we can all feel heart. Um, and so many different reasons why you guys said yes. Um, and I, I hope that that connects with someone joining tonight. Okay, so I want to actually break that down because you guys did talk about being different types of, you know, at different stages in your career, wearing different hats. And so my question number two, I'm going to kind of frame like this. So we know that this opportunity is great for anybody who's willing to invest in themselves and invest in doing the work, right, to meet their goals. 
And if I were to kind of categorize people, I'd say we might have the busy. I think that's Jenna, the busy, um, you know, the one who can't possibly think of doing one more thing. And then we have, um, we have the one not new to career success, has a career, you know, Lisa, you just said five jobs. And we have a lot of people who are like, I love what I do. I don't necessarily want to leave my career, but this would be great to have something additional. And then, you know, that entrepreneurial spirit, working mom, um, and really making that decision of kind of balancing life and also taking on the business. So um, in that order of, we'll start with Jenna, we'll go to Lisa, and then we'll bring it home with Melissa. I'd love for you to just explain to our guests why this truly is a business opportunity for everyone, kind of based on that category I gave you. Sure. So I'm the busy. Um, and I, I really enjoy being busy, guys. I don't love downtime. Um, I'm more productive when I'm busy. And I think busy people would agree that they're more productive when they're busy. Um, so for me, I believe, one of the reasons I believe this can be for anyone is because it really is a business that you fit in where you can. So that's number one, right? Like when I was growing this business, I worked 70 hours a week. I grew my business. I always joke from my car. I commuted 90 minutes from Calabasas to West Hollywood. And for those of you that are local, you know that in traffic, that's a solid 90 minutes right there. So um, I see Lisa laughing because she's got good traffic now. I see that. Um, <laughs> so I, um, I literally took skin consults in the car. I did trainings in the car. I trained my team on the car. I enrolled new consultants in the car. Um, I did it all from the car. I also did it from hospital beds when I would get my, my monthly infusions um, or even amidst when I've had many surgeries um, for my Crohn's disease. I've done it from everywhere. So it really can fit in anywhere. Um, I always put orders in after 8.30 at night when my kids are in bed. I don't want to take the time to do that during the day. And it doesn't matter if I put it in at 1 o'clock or 9 o'clock. It's going to be shipped the next day. So it doesn't really matter. Um, so there, where there's a will, there is a way. Um, I also think that, you know, on the where there's a will, there's a way part of this is that if you want something bad enough, you will make it happen, okay? Um, that's just, maybe it's my personal belief. When I wanted to be a neuropsychologist, there was nothing that was gonna stop me. When I wanted to get into UCLA, there was nothing that was gonna stop me. Um, and I think with this business, if you come in and you say, um, I wanna make $500 a month. Guys, that's totally doable and reasonable. Um, in fact, you don't even have to build a team to do that, right? Um, but if you come in and you say, I want this to be a total game changer and replace my income, then you should be willing to do whatever it takes to get there. And if you do come in like that, then you probably are that person. So, you know, busy people get stuff done and where there's a will, there's a way. That's why I believe that this business could be for just about anyone. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you, Jenna. Okay, Lisa, over to you. Successful uh, careers, but you know, why something else? Well, you know, I don't know if I have like the, the cookie cutter answer for that. I just, again, I just felt like um, I really love the product and that's what really sold me on it. And then I thought, you know, the business side of it is sort of why not continue to spread the word, this residual income, um, you know, I talk about it and share it with my friends. I share it with my family. Um, so I don't think that I have any like long drawn out answer other than I feel like it fit. When I really believe in a product, then I'll get behind it. And so it wasn't really for initially just for a financial movement. But I do think I think the business is you get out of all business what you put into it. And I would love to continue to build a team where we could really uh, make more impact in more parts of the world. That's really uh, one of my goals. Excellent. Melissa? Yeah. And before I get into that, can we just pause and think for a second how intimidating it is to play on the tennis court with Lisa Leslie or when you're in the middle of a clinic and the only thing that you can do is throw her over a sunscreen to be on the team um, level with her. But I'm not going to digress. So, that, and I'm 5'1". Let's just, let's just call that out there. <laughs> um, so I am your typical stay-at-home mom. I did have a career. I sacrificed that career to be home with my children. And I was longing for this. I was longing for something 
for, for me. And while I love my children to death and I can be their class mom and I can cut their sandwiches in quarters after they tell me to cut it in half and I can do all those things, I knew that there was something that I needed in my life to balance being a mom. And it wasn't until recently that I figured out that a stay-at-home mom and a work-at-home mom are very different. And honestly, right now, in in the current situation that we're all living with homeschooling and helping our children with their schoolwork while teachers call PE and we're running outside with them and we're, our hats are just multiplying um, by the day, I feel so blessed and I feel so fortunate and so lucky, and I can even get emotional about this, but to be in a business that I am not financially impacted as severely as the many people I know who own businesses that they invested hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars to open. And it is a really scary time for them right now. But we are at April 20th and on April 15th, when my entire team got a paycheck from the month before and I was able to ask them, what does this mean to you? What did it do? Was it helpful? And the little things from being able to put food on the table to putting away for their kids' college to supplementing the income of their husband who's, whose job just ended or to help them pad their security because their plan A is not fulfilling themselves right now, their answers were so varied. And it was in that moment, just a few days ago, that I realized how grateful and thankful I am for this business. And I'm not just a stay-at-home mom. I am a businesswoman by every sense of the word. And I am a global businesswoman building this brand and helping it achieve a status of success all over the world. And I'm damn proud of that. And I think that if you're considering this business for two seconds, think about what it could do for you today. And then think about what it's going to look like three, five, seven, now nine years from now, if you stick with it and you actually treat it like a business. So you can be anything that you want to be. And I have a team of thousands of people at this point, and they are moms, they are widows, they are police, police officers, they are nurses, they are doctors, they are teachers, they are everything in between. And there is a spot on the team and within this company for everyone. And the success, like Jenna mentioned before, is endless. There is no ceiling. You have to work really, really hard if you have big goals. That is 100% certain. But I'm no different than the next person. And um, there's a lot of this community structure that I never, ever dreamed about or in, envisioned or even knew that I was longing for until it was right in front of me. So, um, so yeah, so you can be mom and you can have a successful business and, and really have it all. Yes, I love that. You can have, a, have it all. And I love that you talked about too, Melissa, that it's really defining for yourself what having it all looks like and gives us a chance to re kind of formulate that. Okay, I want to spend some time talking about one of my favorite categories, which is life changing skincare and the products that we love. Um, for as you guys know, I shared a little bit about my story growing up in the beauty industry. And I will tell you, it was very intimidating at first when I learned that I had to learn over 8,000 SKUs in Sephora. But I loved reading the ingredients and the, you know, reading all the labels and helping people connect to the products and learning what are good ingredients, what are great ingredients, what are not so great. And I really have tried and experienced so many and none have impressed me and wowed me time and time again, like the Rodan and Fields product portfolio. Um, we have something for absolutely everybody. Um, for our um, experience and enjoyment tonight, I have 
disabled the chat, but I want you guys to think in your mind of what products, if you are a consultant that you love, I know you have them. If you have them nearby, bring them up, show us in the camera. Um, but we have something for absolutely everybody. We have something for those concerned with corrective or preventative aging. We have something for those um, who are seeking acne solutions. We have something for those who deal with sensitivity. So this would be my mom who actually uses a regimen you're going to hear a little bit about. I won't steal some thunder, um, but she has sensitive skin. So when she tries new products, sometimes she has easy reactions. She has not had that experience by using Rodan and Fields um, Soothe the Regimen. And then we have something that um, is great for evening out the skin tone and bringing out radiance. I personally love our reverse regimen for me in particular. Being a woman of color, you get one breakout, but you're reminded of that one breakout for months and months and months because it leaves a mark. Um, do, and we call that post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. It's really stubborn and annoying. But what I love is that the reverse regimen helps you to even out your skin tone, um, eliminate some of those dark marks and reveal a radiant complexion. And just a fun fact, people are actually not born with freckling. Freckling is a form of sun damage. So reverse really, again, helps to even out that skin tone and bring your glow back. So that's just our, our regimen category. We also have additional products because whether you know it or not, no one has just one primary skin concern. You may have secondary skin concerns and the doctors know that. They're still practicing in the Bay Area and they have developed products to meet different needs outside of your core regimen needs. So we have an array of additional products and tools to meet your needs and enhance your experience. And we say what's really exciting is that you can be with Rodan and Fields from your preteens to your hundred and teens because we have something to, to um, support you every step of the way. So you guys see how I get a passionate about the products, but these ladies are passionate too. And I asked them to think about what is their favorite product and share that with us tonight. Um, so Lisa, we're going to kick it off with you. I know you gave us a little taste earlier. I did. That is um, my favorite. <laughs> okay. But show us, show us your favorite. I asked them to also bring the products for a little show and tell. So okay. uh, Lisa, show us first, then Melissa, and then Jenna. Okay, so the Redefine, um, I'm just assuming and talking as if, I, I know people probably already use the products or I'm assuming that you do. And if you don't, like I know one of my girlfriends, Tammy's on here and she doesn't yet. Redefine, so this one is um, a, a daily cleanser and I honestly don't use it every single day, but I probably use it twice a week and that's gonna be a more of an, a, a scrub. You know, it has really nice, the scrub does, it's not very um, abrasive on your skin, but um, it definitely is a great cleanser, especially if you wear makeup. And I do for television, sometimes I have on a lot of makeup. Then there's the Redefine, which is an AM, PM, and it says it on the tops. That one says PM, so you always know which one to wear at night and which one to wear in the morning. I still love both of these. Every day I'm gonna have on my AM. Um, and then every night I put on my PM, but my all time favorite is my intensive renewing serum, which I'm sure you guys are all familiar with, or if you're not, let me just show you. This is my favorite one. If my face was washed, I'd put that on. So this is the serum, you know, you just break that open there. And um, if I do nothing else, to make sure that my face is cleansed, I'm going to use my serum. I feel like the serum is the thing that people really are like, oh my God, uh, you know, all my, I invited a few of my uh, celebrity makeup artists who are on here. Um, they're, they're always talking about how I don't have any pores, how they're so closed up. And I really think um, it's been due to this intensive renewing serum. So I love that a lot. I feel like people, even in my social media, make comments about I'm aging backwards or I still look the same and things like that. And you know, this is my secret. So no, momento, I, Lisa, espérate, no te vaya. secret out Hello. of court. But this is uh, the thing that Hello. I love, love the most. Can you guys still hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. Okay, so that's probably uh I, I showed you guys the most of the other things and then the lash boost. Uh I mean, I have uh, so many people who who love the lash boost who help it helps your lashes to grow very fast. And unfortunately, when I go to work uh, on television, again, I wear strips 
So sometimes I have to reset my eyelashes because they'll get pulled out from the strips, but this always brings me right on back um, very quickly. So I love the, the lash boost as well, if you guys can see that. So those are my favorite. This is my starting five over here. Uh, I don't know. If <laughs> I love it. <laughs> and so move my camera a little bit all on the desk, but this, this blue team is my team and has really helped me feel like um, I moved into a place where I'm really aging well and I use it daily. Like I said, when I go work out, I start out with my, um, my Radiant Defense um, and I put that on and I'll go for a run. I posted a video of it, I think yesterday, whenever I go for a run or go play sports, I'm gonna have this on because that really helps. And I can feel the difference. The days I don't have it, oh my gosh, I, can, I start to get all these like little pimples from like, I feel like I got burned from the sun and I'll wear a visor with it. But whenever I have it on, wash my face, there's no change in my skin. So again, I can go on and on and I won't, but this is my line that I love and uh, I hope you guys love it too. Okay. Okay, I'll go, I'll go. So when I joined this business nine years ago, I had a toddler and I was seven months pregnant with my son. Um, my skin was wild. It was hormonal. It was a hot mess. And the only thing that helped me was unblemish. And the first thing I want to say is prior to joining this business, I was not a skincare girl. I would go to bed with my makeup on. I would wake up with mascara on my pillowcases. Like that, that was just reality for me. But when I started using unblemish and saw that hormonal acne could be controlled, it was a game changer. Um, my skin is clear now. I have completely changed the appearance of my skin, but I still use this because it's like, I'm afraid to stop. <laughs> um, and I'm like a little bit addicted to it. So I love my unblemish every morning. I use this and I am just obsessed with it. But my all time favorite product, like forever with Rodana Fields, and I've seen a lot of products come and some go, is our active hydration serum. Um, and from not being a skincare girl to begin with, I had to educate myself on the, on the whole point of this because I do tend to get a little bit oily at times and I was not confident that if I used this, I wouldn't break out. I thought it was going to make my skin break out again, but I quickly learned the difference between moisturizing and adding hydration. And let's just face it, when the brains behind your business literally develop a new molecule that they put into testing and clinical trials and they call it 3D, 3P molecular matrix. And you have to practice how to say that 47 times every time you do a virtual event, you know, it's gotta be good. But the actual delivery system of the active hydration serum takes the guesswork out of it. So when you lift the dropper, it pre-fills, I don't know if you could see this, to the amount of product that you actually need to use. So you're not going to use too much. You're not going to use too little. And I use this, this twice a day, every single day. And it is, uh, it, it makes you glow. It gives you that dewy look. And it can layer onto any skincare regimen that we have, whether you have oily skin, dry skin, sensitive skin, it is a friend for everybody. So this is my all-time favorite Rodan product. I feel like all the products are a friend for everyone. <laughs> um, so I combine, I started off on the Redefine regimen. I still use the Redefine regimen. Um, that's what was recommended for me, but I have genetic rosacea. So when I don't have my radiant defense on, um, I've got pink cheeks and pink undertones, just like my mama does. And the only thing that works is if I incorporate the Soothe Regimen. Um, so the Soothe Regimen is meant to hydrate and nourish the skin. It helps to repair the lipid barrier of the skin and to reduce inflammation in the skin so that it doesn't look as red. And really when we see redness on people's faces, it's generally a reflection of inflammation. So um, the gentle wash, but the sensitive skin treatment in this box, um, which is number two, 
is actually in my house a total free for all. Um, my son has eczema, I use it on him. When my kids were little and had rashes, I used it on them. It's not necessarily clinically indicated for that, but because it is such a great treatment for dry skin and dry skin conditions, um, it works for that too. But my all time favorite, well, my all time favorite product is Radiant Defense. I will say that hands down. Um, but I love the masks, guys. And this is the Soothe mask that complements our regimen. Um, I have tweens now, hard to believe, and my daughter, oh my gosh, so my daughter used it last night with my brother, and look, there's nothing left. <laughs> um, my daughter likes to come in and steal this mask. It is the only one I will let her use because she doesn't have skin that needs um, to address any other problem, but tweens are into masks, guys. Uh, but this mask immediately, for me, takes the redness away and it rehydrates my skin, so I'm a big fan of the masks. My favorite mask is the reverse radiance mask. Um, I love it. I love that you guys shared um, your favorite picks. And I, I love that you brought your little visual so we could see and get up close and personal. And one thing I want to let everyone know is our doctors are so um, considerate and thoughtful of our customers and our new um, consultants. All of our products, including our business kits, do have a 90-day money-back guarantee. So if you are thinking about trying something new, really considering um, getting started and experiencing our products, I love that we have that ability to make sure you're loving everything that you're trying. Okay, ladies, now I want to um, talk about legacy. Um, and, you know, all of us, we kind of talked about the ability to um, empower other entrepreneurs, um, help people feel more confident in their skin and comfortable in their skin, break through glass ceilings. And, you know, when the doctors started this business, their mission was to bring more dermatological solutions um, to people's bathroom counters all over the world, um, to empower more entrepreneurs to take more control of their life trajectory, their financial independence. And, you know, when I think about legacy, sometimes it can feel very big. You know, some of the ladies' resumes here, you know, you might be thinking, um, as we all sometimes do, a little bit of that comparison. But what I love about legacy is that it doesn't actually take a whole lot. You know, I recently, uh, went and bought a bunch of canned goods and food and dropped them off at a local uh, food bank. And they were so grateful for that. And that was a little way, right, to leave a legacy. Our company has been using our lab to produce hand sanitizer for local um, hospitals so that they have those resources. Um, that's our way of giving back. I actually was able to travel with one of the organizations that we support um, through our very own Prescription for Change Foundation to work with youth in um, Chicago, teaching um, literacy program. And then I hopped a flight from San Francisco to Malawi, Africa to build a school there um, so that the young women could have an opportunity to learn in an environment that was safe. And though they may not, these things may not show up on the cover of a Time magazine, or honestly, most of my friends may not even know that this is part of my life because I give back through my heart. I know I'm leaving a legacy. And I just want to reassure all of you that legacy um, is personal to you. And there is no big or small to leaving a legacy. And I think that's one of the great gifts of this business is we are a business that's bigger than skincare. We do want to leave our mark and we do want to leave a legacy. So now I would love to hear in this order, Jenna, Melissa, and then Lisa, what does it mean to you to leave a legacy and how do you feel your Rodan and Fields business will help you to do that? So I thought long and hard about this, but I didn't have to think that long because immediately my grandparents came to mind. Uh, my grandparents were Holocaust survivors, and they came to this country with nothing. Um, my grandfather swept floors in a liquor store um, at six foot three and barely a hundred pounds. Um, and some years later, he came to own that liquor store and start other businesses in downtown LA um, that he built from the ground up. My grandparents um, were the hardest working people I know, um, spent their teen years in the camps in Auschwitz, uh, without formal education, obviously. Uh, my grandmother, just one of the smartest people of all time. And um, they, they left for us 
education was really important to them. So one of the things that they did was they took every dime they owned, anything they, that they could save, and they put it into education accounts for uh, my brother and I and my, my three cousins. And that was their legacy. They wanted us to have access to the education that they never had. And so when I think about a legacy, I think about something like that, something that will impact generations to come, not just my children, um, but their children and their children. And with my Rodan and Fields business, I know that you know now I earn enough where I can save. Um, I can save to put away for college for them because I think by the time they get to college, the tuitions are gonna be really outrageous, <laughs> especially if they wanna go to state. Um, but I really want them to have something to pass down. I want them to tell stories about how their mom did it all, you know, that she worked and she was home and she was educated and that she provided this life. Um, and I want the story to be positive and I want, I want the lesson to be about resilience and I want the lesson to be about hard work. Um, and so for me, that's what legacy is. And that's how my Rodan and Fields business is going to lend to my legacy. I love that, Jenna. So in a very similar tone, I, of course, have my kids at the forefront when I think about legacy. And my husband and I are serial philanthropists. Um, we give back in big ways and in small ways. And, you know, to see my children do things this month while we're home, like, let's bake cookies for the nurses and let's drop some masks off at so-and-so's house down the street because he's a doctor. Those small things are so valuable and so important for me to witness because we lead by example. And I have built a life for my family that is going to leave a legacy. There's no question there. And it is at this point in my Rodana Fields career that I just wish that for everybody on my team and within the Rodan and Fields community. And you know, when we when we coach our teammates, so take this with a grain of salt if you're an existing consultant, we always say, pay yourself first, help yourself, run your business, and then help your team. But there are times that I put the team first. I, I'm good. I'm there. I'm working. I'll still work for sure. But when I hear stories of people on my team being able to lift up their families and save houses and pay for a first vacation. And, you know, I, I always think of this one story of a girl on my team, her name is Erin, and she, all she wanted to do was put her girls in dancing school and she couldn't do it. And then she joined our team and she built her business. And the next year, her girls were all enrolled in dancing school. And just that, that, mindset and that goal that always sticks with me, my legacy right now, is to help empower others to do what I have done. And I am not a salesy person. I'm not an aggressive person. I like to fly under the radar as much as possible, but you can do that and have an impact at the same time. Well, good answer. I think for me, um, you know, I think about legacy. I always think about my own ancestors and you know, I don't know if you guys saw the movie Harriet Tubman recently, but um, just the fact that, you know, where our ancestors have come from and what we've gone through that I tell my children, you know, people have died for us to have the freedom and the opportunities that we have to be able to have the education that we have. So I'm really a person who I love to learn. I love to learn from other people, but I also know where I've come from. And to have opportunities in business uh, to me is just it's a no-brainer. It's something that we should do. And having the opportunity to spread the word and empower other women for me, um, it, it's it's awesome. And, and I've done that my whole career. The idea of being a role model for other women and for young girls um, around the world, I, I just, I don't see any better fit for me. So I feel like my spiritual gift is my ability to speak bring people together, make people happy. And I tried to do that when I was an athlete, but even since retiring and all the other jobs that I have. Um, and then the idea of giving back, um, I think we're, you know, our kids are always watching. We're examples of, uh, you know, for them. And so the fact that I have so many jobs, I'd like for my kids to see. And I explain to them, you know, what it takes. It's hard work. No one's giving you anything. Yeah, you can have talent. You can't bury those talents, but you have to work hard. And so, um, I'm no stranger to hard work in anything that I do. Um, 
but I think also it's a it's a family thing where you know you talk about legacies like if my kids have the opportunity to watch me work and see how I work they got a chance to watch you know old videos of me playing and things like that but even now every day the 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 effort from 6 a.m till they get ready to go to bed which they're past their bedtime right now looking at me out through the window but you know just I give it my all every single day. And I think part of that legacy hopefully will be passed on to my children and the understanding of a work ethic and what it takes to be successful, but also how to manage that success. Um, you get out of life what you put into it and to recognize that connection to our ancestors, it, it was for a reason. So for me, um, that's what drives me is that opportunity, um, but also the idea of, uh, of success and that people worked hard for me to be able to have these opportunities that I had. Excellent. So many ways to leave a legacy. Well, you guys, thank you so much, ladies, for sharing your inspiring stories tonight. And, you know, again, I just want to go back to how I opened up. You know, sometimes life you know, set you off course in a good way. Um, you know, for me, it was a hurricane that were could have really stalled in me and a lot of people in a lot of negative ways. And yet it was a great time to pause. Think of my talents, think of what could be, and maybe have a different perspective on an opportunity that was presented to me. Sometimes life throws you some really weird hackers on a great Zoom call, but you jump in there and you mute them and kick them out. And sometimes, you know, life presents us with moments like this, where we are in current times, you know, rethinking, are we financially confident? Are we, um, do we really have that plan B? Now I'm really thinking about what are my choices? Maybe you're thinking about how you wanna leave a legacy. People ask me all the time, Maisha, is there still room for me at Rodan and Fields? Is there still opportunity? Let me tell you, okay? Seven out of 10 people still have not heard of Rodan and Fields, and it is so true. I'm still practicing my social distancing, but when I go out and walk my dog, I see people out there and I'm just thinking to myself, they haven't heard about this business. They haven't tried the products. And I'm sure many of our consultants find that to be the case too, when they check in with friends or you know, when we are able to start to socialize and connect again. So what does it mean? It means that you very well could be the first person to introduce these products and this business to your network. That's exciting for you and so exciting for them. So if you're wondering, you know, Melissa said she got in a few years ago. Jenna's been in a while. Lisa's getting started. There's absolutely abundant opportunity. And with us also setting our sights on opening Japan and seeing even lower awareness of the brand in Canada and Australia, the sky truly is the limit. And there's absolutely beautiful red carpet runway for everybody to meet their goals with this business opportunity, not just today, but long term. So for our guests tonight, thank you so much for coming and listening in, maybe getting a lot of your questions answered, learning a little bit more about our opportunity and our industry. We'd love to welcome you to this Rodan and Fields community, because as we say, nothing changes is nothing changes. We'll train you, we'll coach you, we'll support you, and we'll make sure though you are in business for yourself, that you're never in business by yourself. If you have questions about how to get started, because we make sure that you select the best toolkit to arm you with success in this business, the consultant who invited you tonight can take you through all of our options. I want you to really think about which one will set you up for success to engage your network and to give you personal product experience results. So really think that through. And if tonight you're thinking, I'm not sure if the business is absolutely where I want to go right now, but wow, hearing Lisa share those products or Jenna share those products or Melissa's favorites has me thinking I do want to begin as a customer. We'd love to have you as a preferred customer as well. Um, and if right now you're like, I had a great time, I enjoyed hearing from all of you, I have some things I want to think about, but I do know some friends or family um, who would love to learn more, please share those names with the consultant who invited you tonight. As you've heard, our goal is to empower and support as many people with the knowledge of this business and these products as possible.
So thank you all for coming out, shooting for the stars with us. And um, thank you again to these incredible leaders who opened their hearts and their homes uh, to us to share their RNF journeys with us. I look forward to all, seeing all the faces of our guests, hopefully very soon on future RNF experience as you are now officially RNF family. Everyone, please continue to be safe, stay connected, and be well. Thank you again. Thank you, Maisha. Thank you. Yeah.